Oh, no, no, no. You cover it faster than she goes, right? <laughs> So after a long trip, traveling, train, plane, 13 hours later, I came from the tropics and some rain to this beautiful winter wonderland. It's been snowing like crazy. It was actually snowing in Tokyo, and they were saying that hasn't happened um, in a couple of years, so it must be a really whew, cold winter. <laughs> so we're currently in the city of Sendai, which is in the Tohoku region, which is a city I have absolutely no information about or knowledge about. I'm currently shooting something here, but they are very famous for one thing and one thing that I really want to try, and that is beef tongue. My current dilemma is the only restaurant I found that has this beautiful gyutan is out there somewhere, not in the comfort of this cozy mall. So I'm gonna have to try to brave the weather and take my phone and my camera and figure out where this place is. So I found a place, um, there's nothing better than hot tea when it's so cold. At one point I had to duck for cover because it was literally coming down sideways. Oh my god, it's so cold. Uh, so this place basically has almost only beef tongue on the menu. Different styles, uh, from curries to hot pots and things. So I just got the grilled one set with some rice and some vegetables. So I'm really excited because this is actually one of my first big meals of the day. Alright, so my experience with beef tongue is usually um, French style or Filipino style, it has a lot of sauce. I've never actually had it just purely grilled like that. It was actually like par cooked, I think, right before he put it on the grill. And it came out in like 10 minutes really quick, so perfect because I was so cold and so hungry. The absolute opposite of what I was um, picturing in my mind. I was picturing something kind of like thick and really chewy and slimy. It is chewy, don't get me wrong, but it really tastes like just a properly cooked piece of steak. Maybe with a slightly more funk, but much more chewiness to it. It's served with a soup right next to it. Yum, that's just exactly what I needed. And there's some chunks of like beef bones in there and cartilage as well, so it just gives it a really nice beefy brothy flavor. I'm happy. I'm really happy. Just like every good meal, it has to come to an end. At one point, that was so good. I actually want more. That was maybe 180 grams. I'm not gonna overdo it. I'm here for the next five days and there's gonna be lots of food to come. Thank God the snow has calmed down a little bit. It's still snowing, but not as bad as a while ago. And at least I have food in my tummy now, so nice and warm. After one hour and a half on a bus through beautiful mountainscapes, we arrive here and we're about to go on one of those for a ride. After a quick 30 minute boat ride, we find ourselves here at the end of the river basically and it's just absolutely gorgeous and it's so white and apparently it doesn't snow this much but it just happened to snow a lot the other day. Um, and so we've got this beautiful winter wonderland just for ourselves. The Tohoku region is not as famous as Tokyo, Hokkaido, or the Kansai region, but it has a lot to offer from world heritage temples like Chusonji and Wuri to one of the largest onsen towns, uncrowded ski slopes and snowshoe tracks. This is really the place for history buffs and nature lovers. If you're like me, food is always an integral part of my trips, and luckily enough, the town of Ichinoseki specializes in all kinds of cooked sticky rice, known as mochi. We went to one of the 30 shops selling a specialty in the area to try a couple of the more than 300 varieties available. So we have all the different kinds of mochi here, from peanuts, to black sesame, to edamame, to natto. I usually didn't like natto before, but it's actually pretty good this time. So there's beautifully cooked rice cakes, different types of sauces and flavorings. Really interesting stuff. This one I would actually recommend. I actually never knew mochi could have so many savory applications to it. I'm so used to having them just filled and not necessarily topped with sauce. So 
that was really interesting. Um, and I hope you guys get to try that because that was really delicious too. Once we've had our fill of rice, naturally noodles were next on the menu. The city of Morioka is known for its three great noodles, each representing the various influences this region has endured. Wanko Soba is probably the most local one, where Raymond hails from Korea and Jajimin from China. We try them all in one night. So we're in this noodle place in Morioka, where basically they do this challenge of how many noodle bowls you can eat, and they'll refill them. One girl did 500. That's absolutely crazy. I'm probably gonna do two. <laughs> The strangest instructions ever before a meal. This is called Wanko Soba, which is the system of eating the soba. Basically everything that's in front of us right here are just to change our palates in terms of whether or not we get sick of eating something. So the purpose of all of this is to try to eat as much as possible. Um, in my competition today. <laughs> she's gonna beat me. I think she's gonna beat me. I'm starting to get full. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. Am I beating you? I think I'm beating you. I'm faster. Yeah, I think this is my last one. This is my last one. Oh, no, no, You have to cover it faster than she goes, right? Well done. There you go. Not bad. I'm proud of myself. What's her, her maximum? 101. 101? Yes. Whoa, I feel so bad now. <laughs> One, I have 30. <laughs> well, you have two more meals after this, right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I have an excuse. <laughs> So here we have ramen, which is basically more of a cold noodle, which I think personally probably takes influence from the Korean restaurants. So you have your grilled plaques in front of you and you've got these beautiful cold noodles, some kimchi, um, there's a nice garlicky broth, some slices of beef in there. It's absolutely delicious. Even though it's freezing outside, this is really tasty and it's something that I would definitely recommend. I'm on my second bowl, or actually no, 30 second bowl of noodles. I'm starting to get a little bit full, but we're powering on. We've got one more to go. Last dish of the day is the hot jaja at hot jaja. To be honest, I'm absolutely full right now, but this is like a really nice warm dish that I could totally understand why people eat this in the winter. It's nice thicker udon noodles, very starchy, very slimy with a miso-based sauce in there, some grated ginger, some cucumber, some pickled radish that's so in there as well. And it's just kind of like one of those dishes that you mess up, mix together, and then eventually it comes into a beautiful, delicious mess like this. It's really good, really filling. Out of all the three, honestly, my favorite was probably number two. I think the Rayman, the cold Rayman, even though it's freezing outside, was the winner for me, but they were all absolutely delicious, and you guys should try it next time you're in town. We finally got into the Akita area in the Tohoku region still. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed eating with me those noodles, that beef tongue, everything was absolutely amazing. Um, I'm still here for about two or three days, but I'm not too sure what we'll be able to shoot. My hands are rigid. So I don't know what is the next video coming up. There's definitely another Japan video coming up with the next two days going around the Akita area. I'm not too sure what we'll see. So maybe I'll make a video out of it. Maybe I won't. If not, check me out on the sweet potato video, which is coming up next. See ya.